Praise the Lord! Hi, good evening, everybody. Yeah, I'm going to let it flow now, too, because I don't have anything prepared, but... <coughs> husband of mine. <laughs> husband of mine. I know. Does he want to open? No. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I'm just here. We are. I'm going to open up in prayer. If anybody has a prayer request or testimony that they'd like to share, you. <laughs> uh, I got a text message from Tim Hatton. He asked. He said they wouldn't be able to be here tonight, but he asked for prayer for him and his family. Okay. okay. Sheila. Uh, a lot of us from Metro remember Carrie Van Weldon, and yeah. yeah, I don't know if you guys saw that text that uh, Callie, her daughter, um, had a pulmonary embolism this morning, and so both lungs, <clears throat> and so yeah, she's on medication right now and may have to be on the rest of her life if she doesn't get better. And Callie's only, shoot, my kids' is age, really, really young, in her 20s. Wow, okay. So, great for Callie. Yep. Um, I'm going on a trip tomorrow uh, to Minnesota for a big food event, and um, Michael Fox will rescue, bless him. Um, he built me something at the ve absolute very last minute for nice. my display, so yep. bless him, blessings to him for that. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I got paint, so we're good. I'm going with it. <laughs> um, the, it's a two-day event, and uh, it's, a fr it's Friday and Saturday. The, the main reason I went was for the Friday. Uh, but I figured since we're in Minnesota, why not just stay for both days? Mm. Um, so the Friday is for uh, restaurant chefs, owners, uh, grocery stores. Mm -hmm. So this could, this will be an amazing opportunity yes. for yeah. us. And I'm, I'm just going to believe when we travel there tomorrow that that's what it's going to be. And then Saturday it's open to the public. So... Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this as our first big event, mm -hmm. um, as like a professional looking company. So, <laughs> um, Eric will be, uh, driving there in his van and I will be driving in my truck so that I don't have to drive a trailer, uh, or pull a trailer myself. And then he will be driving back. So he's actually been driving all day long today, doing deliveries to Rock Island and Cedar Rapids and Porterville and all over. And so and then he's going to drive to Minnesota tomorrow. And we can't set up until 6, six o'clock tomorrow night. So he'll be driving back late. So um, just keep him in your thoughts. Yes. And um, keep, keep, I guess, keep all of us in your box and you'll be driving back Sunday so I will not be here Sunday but um, I think it'll be exactly the push we need yes. Amen. and uh, a, a small thing happened today um, that I'm very very thankful for I have uh, previously gotten in touch with the, the fourth and court Hy-Vee downtown about carrying our products and no one was ever interested and I persisted and no one was interested and Today, out of the blue, I got an email from the dietitian at Fourth and Court, Hi <laughs> B. So, um, I <clears throat> they want to put our products in there, but the biggest thing for us is uh, they are considering putting our three tap kegerator in there. So anybody can go in and get Great their kombucha. Lord. So that Ooh, would man. be yes. absolutely wow. phenomenal. They would be the only place in Des Moines that would have three flavors on tap nice. and um, what I want to happen is that other stores will see the success yes. Yes. and uh, clamor yes. there will be a waiting yes. line a waiting yes. list yep. so tell Harding Hill to see if they yes. can yeah. so yeah. that's my yeah your testimony Nine or chalice right yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love it I'm yes. working yes. like towards sharing from my beat right this fall the moment they have 
Yay. Amen. 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 Yes. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah I, oh, yeah. I don't know. My, my favorite friend, Steve Savage, passed away from cancer when he told me mm. three weeks ago. They knew my mother and my grandmother growing up, and it's just, it's like, why don't people reach out to people rather than not tell them what's going on? We need to reach out for mm-hmm. Jesus' sake. It doesn't mean that we have to be hush hush. We need to reach out so others can hear what they miss. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be here to read people's thoughts. Mm-hmm. We're healing and help mind a human church if you guys have been great. It's, it's very hard to go through maybe somebody like Stephen Mel, who I've seen all growing up with my wife and then have him and that son of God and it's really cold and it's just uh, I think we have another moment after the son, I'm sorry. But mm-hmm. I appreciate you guys. Yes, amen. Amen. Yeah. Our daughter Leah, my <coughs> granddaughter Leah, and my daughter Tracy have been sick for, I don't know, five or six days and just don't seem to be able to kick this thing. All congested. Yeah. Usually, this baby's lucky. <laughs> okay. So, pray, pray for, for healing. healing. Good recovery. Good yeah, Peter. So we prayed for this, I think it was last week. Um, my friend that had left her husband to go back to be with her kids, she's now flying back to go be with her husband again. So things, yes. God's just working Amen. stuff out there. Amen. Thank not, you. not exactly the way she probably would have wanted it, but. Right. Whatever it takes. Yeah, praise God. And just like the word says, we have a right to declare these things yeah. in our lives. Just like when Sarah was talking, I put a command on God's word today for our finances, and it's like. He will not fail us if we put our full trust in him. So we're going to believe for all these requests, uh, your friend's lungs, everything here that was spoken, that it is declared and done in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of the financial thing, uh, the city went to Iowa City today to get a further uh, oral situation taken care of over there. And and I didn't know until yesterday it was supposed to be only a few hundred dollars that we were able to cough up to get things rolling again, but it, it more than quadrupled to have a check in their hand today when she went um, to go mm-hmm. for starters uh, because the insurance company is back and forth and stuff like that. you got to get this all done before the end of the year, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Um, pray for wisdom on it. We were able to... Uh, we were way through things and readjust things and everything else to come up with for today, but uh, from now till the end of the year, just put things in a total line, including Christmas. So, uh, just Jehovah Jireh. Yeah, provider. provider. Right. And take care of things and uh, uh, just happen to have uh, a third of it in my HSA account that mm-hmm. we were able to jack into and, and take care of that. But there's still the other two thirds you got to deal with. Mm-hmm. As you all know, I got a basement with an exposed pipe that I got to get cut out and replaced and stuff, but that money's gone right now. But the Lord will provide. Yes, so He I will. Know. Abundance. Yes. Uh, so we can stand and go to Him in prayer right yeah. now, declaring these things. Yeah, you know, Thank you. when we do this, I just encourage everybody, you know, we've talked about this before, writing out promises, writing mm-hmm. out scriptures that you're claiming. But whatever we pray for, mm-hmm. just continue to confess it. Yes. I mean, because the enemy comes to steal the word. Right. right? Yeah. Praying in agreement with the word of mm-hmm. God, even though we may not be quoting scriptures, we're still agreeing with the presence, and that's mm-hmm. all really matters. But the problem we have a lot of times is we'll pray, and we walk out, and we're confronted with the mm-hmm. circumstance again, and we immediately start confessing yeah. that, and we undermine what God wants to do. God is... Yep. Yes. Depending on us to stay faithful yes. to His word, and that's that's the fight of faith. Yes, so right. we pray and declare, yep. and then we just continue to declare in spite of the circumstances, in spite of mm-hmm. the contradictions that will come, because they will come. Yeah. He's going to do everything he can to try to get you convinced that well, this can't happen for you because he right. does this and you got that. Right. But we're not putting our confidence in what we can produce or what we can do. Our confidence is in what He's right. already done. He's yes. promised us mm-hmm. success. 
and victory over every situation and circumstance. So Amen. we're going to pray, yes. believing it, and then continue to confess that. Absolutely. Until we see the manifestation. Right. It's got to come. Yes. 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 Testimony. Glory. 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 Thank you, Lord. We just come to you right now, Jesus. God, in the Praise name of God. Jesus, believing Thank in your you, truth Lord. and in your Amen. word, Lord. Yes. We know, God, that all things are possible through you. We know, God, that if we confess it with our mouth, Lord, your truth with our mouth, God, you will not fail to honor the things that you have promised us, Lord. In our finances, God, bless us. Bless Sarah and Eric as they go on this journey, Lord, because it's a journey for you, Lord. It's for you, God. For the lungs, Lord, we command these lungs healed in the name of Jesus. For these sicknesses, these colds, all these little tedious lies, Lord, that come against our health, God. We proclaim health in our bodies in the name of Jesus. Prosperity in our finances, God. You didn't say you'll just provide. You said you abundantly provide for us, God. And we will stand on that truth, Lord. For Tim, God, and his family, Lord, we pray you know the situation, God. Give him wisdom and knowledge to keep moving forward in your truth, God. We love you, Lord. This church, everybody that is here, everybody that is not here, God, we call them from the east, the north, the south, the west, God. Bring your people to this church, God, that they will hear your word, your truth, the gospel truth, God, because it is good news, it is grace. And we just stand in that grace, God. We know that we are the righteousness of God through you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for that righteousness, Lord. We will let freedom reign in our lives, God. We will let that reign in our lives. And we thank you, God. We praise you, Lord. We pray a blessing upon the service, upon our pastor, God. Let his word, which is your word, become truth in our lives. That it is alive and living in us, Lord. We love you, God. We praise you and we thank you for this night, Lord. You are here right now in our midst. We just thank you, God, for your glory. You've never failed us, Lord. You will not fail us. You will not fail. Thank you, God, for being one with us. Thank you, God, for going before us in all things. Thank you, God, that mercy and grace follow us all the days of our life. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you thanks and honor and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for moving in our midst, Lord. You are here. You are here before us, God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your truth. Stand. We'll stand on that truth, Lord. It's your sweet presence, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do I need to click through? Do you want me to click through? that December 8th this Eastern Day Asbury yes we're going after them. we are getting okay. all the distractions and everything else out of the way the commercialisms all the yes. all the even the sicknesses and the financial things and all those parts that just kind of want to just rob and steal away from the reason for this season mm -hmm. we find all that stuff and have a great path yes. to celebrate who he is yes so, Amen. Stand, stand in unity and and help get some people really. <coughs> yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> offering? John? You want to take up the offering? <laughs> Go ahead and bless it, John. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you tonight, God, for all the love that you shed in our hearts and 
We learn the spirit, God, that God has spoken to you. Yes, Lord. And given us faith, Lord God, to support more of you. Remember being satisfied, Lord God, we're always wanting more. Yes. We just thank for you for this service, God, tonight that we have the privilege to be in. And yes, yes. Yes. One another. Hold each other up on this request and for your blessing upon this offering and this yes, use for your glory and support of the man of God and his family, Lord, we just thank you and your blessing upon yes. them and upon us in the secret face in the holy name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you because you first loved us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is love. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for that love tonight. The love that you have loved us with. An everlasting love. An unconditional love. Hallelujah. The love of God that passes all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us, Lord, when we were unlovable. Thank you for declaring us lovable. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We bless your name tonight. We love you, Jesus. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise the Amen. Lord. Give him a hand clap tonight. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless all of you. Thank you, Jody, for opening. Thank you, Mike, and the worship team. That was great. You guys were outstanding. Praise the Lord. Serious. That was good. Praise God. I got one thing to say since we're just not here. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Praise the Lord. In lieu of Rita. Yes. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. We can always use it. We can always use more Rita. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, it's Wednesday night, so I'm going to be brief. I always try to be. Except I've got several scriptures in here, but Mike is up to it. I know he is. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. It's pathetic, but you know, I've discovered over the last few days that everything I've learned in life, I learned from watching Howdy Doody. There's only a few of us that actually watched Howdy Doody, but he was quite an influence in my life. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm still a little upset with Mr. Bluster. So, Lord. Chief Thunder Thud, rain in the face, all that stuff. That was, that was great stuff. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's start with uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we'll read verses 9 and 10. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 and 10. Praise God. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Amen. Praise the Lord. John chapter 8 and verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Yep. Praise the Lord. So, amen. When you're hearing things that are contrary mm -hmm. to this, mm -hmm. no matter what it's about, it's a lie. Yes. Yep. Praise the Lord. If it's coming from the devil, it's a lie. Every time he opens his mouth, it's a lie. Yes. He's a liar. That's yeah. what he is. Praise the Lord. God is love. Satan's a liar. Yes. Everything he does is lies. He's a, both a deceiver and a liar. And the scripture says, and the truth is not in him. Right. Praise the Lord. So he wants you to believe that he's all powerful. He wants you to believe that he has control over you or, or power over you. Amen. But the truth is, his power is limited to his deception. Only to the degree that he can deceive you 
does he have any power over you whatsoever? Praise the Lord. Satan, what he does is he takes scripture out of context to deceive people into believing it's not God's will for them to be saved, or it's not God's will for them to be healed, or it's not God's will for them to be blessed, or it's not God's will for them to be prospered. And his ultimate deception is to present truth as error, and error as truth. And either one of those will hold you in bondage. Either one of those will keep you from your inheritance. Either one of those will keep you from all the promises of God being manifested in your life. Every time fear comes, write it down, it's the devil. Yes. Whether it's fear about finances, fear about health, fear, fear. we've all gone there. I mean, we've all been there. We, we see it because we live in this world. Every time that comes, write it down. It's a lie. It's coming from the devil. He's trying to convince you yes. that you're not going to have what God has promised you. Yes. You're not going to have the success that God has promised. You're not going to have the victory that God has promised. You're not going to have the prosperity that God has promised. You're not going to have the health that God has promised. Right. Amen. The devil is a liar. He's a deceiver. And to the degree that he could deceive you and lie to you is the degree that he, he could keep you, amen, in bondage to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are no longer under bondage. We have been set free. Amen. Right. Praise the Lord. So look at, let's look at John chapter 8 and verses 31 and 32. John 8, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he's saying this to the Jews, but it's no different than us. He was saying it to people that believed him. If you continue in my word. Now here's what we do. We hear the word. We might even read the word. We might even memorize the word. Mm -hmm. But then we go out and we don't continue in the word. Mm -hmm. we, we fall back to the old, you know, uh, easy way of doing things or the, the simplest way of doing things, which is the natural way. And we get back right back into natural thoughts, natural words, natural things instead of continuing in the word of God. In other words, God will say... Uh, you know, by his stripes you were healed. Mm -hmm. You got, you know, some symptoms. Uh, Amen. So you go, well, praise the Lord. I got a word from the Lord. You go out and the symptoms are still there. Or maybe the symptoms even get worse. Yeah. We're not continuing in the word. Now we say, oh, my aching back. Or this bad thing is happening. Or that negative thing. Or I'll never be able to take care of this. Or I'll never be able to get that. That's not continuing in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. That's deviating from the word of God. To something else. All right, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Like almost everything in life, consistency is the key. Right. Amen. To be up and down, I don't care if it's on your job, in your relationships, if you're hot one day and cold the next, it doesn't work very well. I mean, because nobody knows who you are today. Right. Right. Right? I mean, are you the hot one today or are you the cold? Don't get me wrong, ladies. I'm not talking that way. I'm just saying, are you really into this job today? Are you really, you know, focused on what you're supposed to be doing? Or ha are you just, you know, out there like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't care. I don't even want to be involved in this anymore. Well, anybody that's ever had to deal with the public knows you, you don't get that option. You need to be on all the time. Or they're going to see it. They're going to understand that and they'll just, they, they, they won't trust you. Amen. Well, that's the way we have to be. We have to be consistent in the Word of God. You can't be hot one day. You can't be in the Word one day and then just lukewarm the next. Right. I'm not talking about performance here. I'm talking about speaking consistently in agreement with the Word of God is how these things happen. And this is the whole reason why we talk about the things we talk about here in this church, about uh, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ, that we are the God image and not the earth image. All of those things are just other ways of saying the same thing over and over and over again. We have to speak out of the reality of who we are, and that reality agrees totally with this. It's the spirit man. Right. The moment we drift back or fall back to that, that easier way of doing things, the natural way of doing things, we lose, amen, the advantage that we have. Because when we're in the flesh, the devil has, yes. can manipulate us. He can control us. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, study yourself, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. I mean, you can read this Bible and not get anything out of it. Or you can read it and get all the wrong thing out of it. Right. I mean, how many, you know, we all come from different things, you know. And, uh, you know, pick a denomination and you'll get a different determination. You'll get a different revelation or a different, we'll call it revelation, but a different interpretation. Yeah. 
Same Bible, same word, all the same words. That's why it's so confusing to people that are unsaved. They look, they look, well, how come you believe, you're believing this and you're believing that? And this, how, how, who knows what we're supposed to believe? That's why the focus has to be Jesus. And the other, everything else will fall into line if you make the focus Him yes. instead of all the other outer lying things. Amen? Yes. So study yourself to show yourself approved unto God, a worker that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right? Drop down, if you can, Mike, to verse 23 through 26. Foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Praise the Lord. Amen. A false truth is a statement that's in the Bible that's been accurately recorded but when we use it or when somebody else uses it or quotes it out of context it's no longer true second Timothy 2 23 and 20 through 26 um, it was just a continuation of uh, where we were reading in 215 so you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. You can have a fact here, but if it's taken out of context, this is what happens with denominations, and we've all seen it. You'll have it, it's 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 recorded here, so it's a fact, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's taken out of context, it becomes untrue. It's only a fact in the context in which it was written. Right. So if you read it out of context, all of a sudden it distorts the whole thing. Right, right. Just like when Jesus is speaking to the Jews under the old covenant. Amen. And it's a fact. He said it, and that's what he said. But if we take that out of context and then try to apply it to the new covenant, people that are not, no longer under that old covenant, who are now under grace, it's a lie now. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. And it distorts everything, amen, that you then try to build upon. Okay? So, praise the Lord. It was true in the situation, but quoted out of context, it becomes a false statement. Yes. Amen. All right, 2 Timothy, back now uh, to 2.25, we're still up here. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Instructing those that oppose themselves. So that God, by chance, or hopefully, will give them repentance to the knowledge or the acknowledging would be agreeing with the truth. Amen. So here we have, you've got good Christians who oppose themselves by the way they talk. Yeah. Yes. I'm not talking about swear words. No. I'm talking about saying things that are contrary to the Word of God. Right. That's opposing yourself. Right. You are a new creature. Yes. You're a new creation in Christ. Yes. Your language, we talked about it Sunday, is the word of God. Right. That's the that's the that's from where we speak. Right. If you get in disagreement with this, if you start talking natural talk, mm -hmm. uh, this will never work out for me, this will never happen for me, you're opposing yourself. Yes. Amen. You're opposing yourselves by the way we talk, by the way we believe, and by the way we act. And again, I'm not talking about sinful actions. I'm talking about contrary actions contrary to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. So, let me just ask you a simple question. Have you always believed what you believe right now? No. No, because no, we're all getting revelation. We're all growing. We're all learning more and more about our relationship with the Lord and about the reality of God and who He is and, and how He relates to us and how we relate to Him. Amen. Look at Psalms uh, 119 and 130. Psalms 119 and 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. It's talking about re wherever you see light, it's talking about revelation. Amen. So the entrance of thy word gives me revelation. It gives me understanding, even to the simple. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be a theologian. Amen. If you can read and just believe, yes. you can be like David said, I'm wiser than all my teachers. Yes. 
He knew more than his teachers. You know, you, if you were to take a course in theology today, I promise you, 99% of the time you'll be wiser, you'll be smarter, you'll have more revelation than the theologian that's teaching the class. Why? Because he doesn't have a relationship with Jesus. He just has an education in the Word of God. There's a huge difference. Yes. Praise the Lord. So look at John chapter 8. Now John 8 verses 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him again, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now everybody that has a Bible, which is a huge percentage of the population of this country and around the world, everybody that has a Bible has the truth. But the Bible doesn't set them free unless, unless that word lives in them. You understand? Unless it has meaning, unless it really has an, a way of impacting you and believing that this is real. It is. The Word of God is alive, it says. Yes. It's spirit and it's life. It's not just words on a page. To us as believers, born again believers, it's alive. Yes. It's more than just yes. verbiage. It's more than just language. That's right. It's a living document. Hallelujah. Yes. It's God in paper. Praise the Lord. So everybody that's got this Bible has truth, but they don't, amen, have the ability to be set free. So it's not just the truth that sets people free. It's the knowledge of that truth that sets them free. It's the acceptance or the awareness of that truth, amen, that sets them free. It's acting on the truth. Yes. Action or reaction to the truth is what sets people free. Right. Praise the Lord. I, I've said this uh, a lot of times, and most of you all heard it many times, but I'm going to say it again just because I can. Uh, <laughs> when I left the organization that I was ordained in, licensed and ordained in years ago, uh, I left after a, a good period of time that I was struggling with trying to decide what I was supposed to do, where I was going to go, and how I was going to do it, and all this stuff. And the Lord spoke to me as clearly as I've ever heard the Lord speak to me. And I was in that, uh, the church there in Ankeny that we had started and praying. And, uh, and I was saying, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know, I know you called me. I know that, that there's a, a calling on my life. I know there's an anointing here, but I don't know how, I don't know what I'm supposed to do because this stuff just isn't right. And the way it was being presented was, you know, it was, it, it was dysfunctional. It was almost counterproductive because on the one hand, I wasn't ever the kind of, you know, clothesline preacher and that kind of thing that some were. And because of that, it kind of ostracized me to some degree with the others. But, but at the same time, I wanted to see people's lives changed. I didn't want to just see them be a part of another, this organization. I wanted to really see something happen. I wanted to see ha something happen to them that, that had happened to me. I wanted to see them have a life-changing experience. Amen. And I couldn't see that really developing in the way that I thought it should. Anyway, the Lord spoke to me and he said, unless you look at this word, talking about the Bible right here, as though you have never seen it before, nothing's ever going to change for you. Come on. It's just going to be, you're just going to have to keep repeating the same stuff over and over and over. And I can honestly say, not with a great deal of foresight or, or wisdom, but I began to do that. And ever since then, and everybody that knows me, anybody that knew me when I was in the organization and preached, they know I was a little bit maybe off-center, but I've gone, I mean, into stuff that I didn't even know was there. Thank you, Jesus. And God was doing it. Yes. And the only reason He did it was because I took Him seriously. Yes. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to freak out here if I'm wrong, because I've already been wrong and I know what that's like. Yeah. And I'm not afraid of being wrong. But what I what I am is afraid of not seeing anything other than what I've ever seen. Right. I want the new thing. I want yes. I really want things, all things to be yes. new. And and I think that's what God's saying to all of us in in some way or another. Mm -hmm. Now maybe you don't have a history of, you know, Bible study and, and you know all of that. But that's irrelevant. You can still be influenced by religion around you, by the things that you've heard, by the things that other people have said. And you can't, you have to be bold enough and have enough courage to trust God 
that He's not going to lead you wrong. That He'll show you some things that you won't find otherwise. Because if you always depend amen, on a denomination or a doctrine or something to give you the information, you're going to be confined to whatever that is. And God is way bigger than all of that. And we don't need to be afraid of making a mistake. You will make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. But I'm not afraid of mistakes. God has taken care of them. He takes care of the mistakes. He's looking for somebody that has guts enough to just step out and risk taking a mistake. It's like the old thing they used to say about, I think it was uh, Millard Fillmore. He was actually a president of the United States. And they said, uh, why does nobody uh, ever know, think of Millard Fillmore? I mean, you start talking about presidents, nobody says, oh, how about Millard Fillmore? Let's talk about him. No, the reason nobody remembers Millard Fillmore was he had this theory that if I don't do anything, I won't do anything wrong. Mm. Nobody remembers him because he never did anything right or wrong. I'd rather, I'd rather do something wrong and at least be remembered yeah. amen, than just stumble through life you know, like a shadow or something. Yeah. So God wants us to be bold yes. and be courageous. Yes. And he's, he's more than capable of getting us back on track if we get too far in one way or another. Amen? Yep. The truth is, the deeper we go, the, the more willing we are to look at things in a different way, the more of God we actually find. Yes. How many of you know eternity is going to be just one continuous revelation? Mm -hmm. Now, there's lots of other things we'll be doing, all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. back here on earth even. But God Himself will be a continuous revelation. Yes. It, it won't be, you'll never get completely to the point where you understand everything about God. And that's what makes it exciting. That's what will make eternity yes. exciting. It's not going to get boring. Amen. Boring. It'll just be a constant revelation of, of greater and greater and greater. So if you've been deceived, then you have to be willing to change how you think. Amen. You have to recover yourself because nobody else can do it for you. That's the fact. Praise the Lord. John, or excuse me, James chapter 4 and verse 7. Let's look at this. Resist the devil. Praise the Lord. Right. <laughs> Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Now look, just look at the, the structure here. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. That's a period there. That's the end of that. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Bang. Now, resist the devil, comma, and the result of that, he will flee from you. Right? It didn't say the devil would flee from God. Come on. Praise the Lord. When you're fully persuaded yes. that this is the truth, yes. that God is faithful, yes. that God is going to do whatever God said he would do, that it's impossible for him to lie. When you're totally submitted to that, yes. That's resisting the devil. Yes. He can't lie to you. He can't deceive you if you're convinced that this is the last word. This is the final word in any situation, under any circumstances. Right. Then the devil will flee from you because he's lost his ability yes. to deceive, which is the only power that he has over you is deception and lies. The moment you are convinced and submit yourself to the word of God, he's lost his power. He has no way of working against you, so he flees from you. Amen? Amen? You resist and submit to the Word of God, and your action will set you free. Amen. Praise the Lord. It goes back to what we're, again, what we're talking about all the time. We have been empowered. Yes. God isn't doing this stuff anymore. He has empowered us yes. to do it by the Spirit that's in us. Yes, we, we, we are praying prayers that are just superfluous at best. They're, they're really just ridiculous and redundant because God's not coming. I mean, he's, we can pray all we want to and beg for God to do something. But the truth is God is expecting us to step out in faith and commit ourselves to his word. And the resistance, the thing that resists us and whatever it is we're praying about, will flee. 
Amen. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray, but we pray in agreement with. We pray, amen, not as, as a pleading to get God to do something, but we pray in a way that says, God, I know that what you have promised you will do. I thank you, Lord, that by your stripes they were healed. I thank you, God, that you suffered poverty that we might prosper. Amen. I thank you, God, that no weapon formed against me can prosper. Hallelujah. So that's, that's the way we are supposed to pray. In confidence and in agreement with the Word of God. Amen? That will set you free. It will set you free from fear. It will set you free from anxiety. It will set you free from doubt. Amen? No matter what the situation is. Amen? Alright, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. We are talking earlier and I said, you know, here's what, what happens is we're we live, we, we live in two worlds. You know, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Well, the problem is we communicate in the wrong language most of the time. Instead of speaking our native language, which is from above, which is the Word of God, we're talking like the heathens. Yes. We're talking like the natives. Yeah. Amen. Of which we are not. Right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And so what we get is what they got. And we can't give them what we've got because if we're talking and behaving and living just like they are, then we've got nothing to offer them. That's why it, they use the, the, uh, the symbolism of us being ambassadors. We're, we're, not here. we're just here as ambassadors from another place, from heaven. And so heaven supplies our needs, not this, not this place. Right? I mean, if you're an ambassador and you go to Europe the euro doesn't supply your needs. They don't pay you. They don't feed you. They don't house you. They don't clothe you. No, your host, your home country does, not the host country. Amen? Well, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We are ambassadors from another place. That's our source. That's who supplies all of our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we have to keep, we have to think this way. And you have to discipline yourself to think this way because naturally you want to Drift back and just fall back into the routine of what everybody else does. It's simple. But it's also destructive. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. The only thing that makes it difficult is it takes discipline. You have to discipline. And we live in a country that is undisciplined. Yeah. The way we talk, the way we think, we, do, we just, I mean, we make up words all the time. I was talking to Toby earlier, we had been talking about a, uh, a Greek interlinear, uh, Greek, Hebrew, uh, English interlinear Bible. And they're fascinating because they give you every single word. And when you look, when you read English, I mean, we, we grew up with English, right? So that's what we know. Thank God I was born in America. If I'd have been born in China, I mean, I can't speak Chinese, so I've been in a heck of a mess, right? But here's what I'm saying is, the English language is dumbed down. There's all kinds of just stuff that doesn't really mean anything. And when you actually use language the way it's supposed to be used, most people don't even understand what you're talking about. But when you look at the Greek or, or Hebrew, for example, those two in particular, they are so expressive and they have so many words that mean the same thing that you can take one word and change an entire yes. speech or language or, or, or conversation just by one word. Yes. And that one word can cause you, the way that it's defined, that one word, the way it's used, can either have you going like this or going like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the con it changes context, it, it changes subject matter, it changes everything just by one word. With ours, you've got to do a lot of manipulating, and then we're not sure what you were trying to say. I mean, we say things like, they burnt the, the house got burned up, and the house got burnt down. Yes. Did it burn up? Did it burn down? Did it burn sideways? What happened? <laughs> right? I mean, we, we just use crazy kind of way of talking that if you don't speak English, you wouldn't have a clue what we're... It's no wonder it's difficult for somebody from another country to come over here and try to learn the language, because it doesn't even make sense to us half the time. And we're trying to teach it to somebody else. Praise the Lord. Oh. Anyway. I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. 
So here, here's how Jesus said it. He said it like this, Matthew uh, 15 and 6. And this is just one place where he talks about traditions will disrupt everything. It'll change the way you look at things, the way you understand things. It'll cause you to believe things that you shouldn't believe. So honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. This have you made the commandment of God. This have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Now I was talking about honoring parents and stuff is what it's leading up to. But there's another place where it talks about, and by your traditions you have made the word of God of no effect. Or it, you've nullified it. Why? Because we have believed traditional teachings that don't agree with the word of God. Right. Just we don't bother to go check. Right. It's what mama believed. Right. right? It's what we hear. I mean, we used to go, Sheila and John and Toby, you guys can testify to this. We go we'd hear the same message every every single service. I'm telling you the truth. It's the truth. Every time you'd hear it. And when I would deviate from that occasionally, I'd get these, I, uh, there would be pastors on the platform because a lot of times they'd preach, you know, get togethers, whatever it was, a sectional meeting or whatever it might be. And you could just hear the uncomfortableness <laughs> behind you. I mean, you could, it was like I'm picking up bad vibrations. I, you actually could. You could just sense it, that they were disgruntled and dissatisfied with it. Where's Acts 238? Yeah, come on, get to the point here. And, and any time you tried to move from that, I remember preaching one time, this is just all about me tonight, but I'm, I'm really important. Uh, but uh, I, was, I was preaching a message about the woman with the issue of blood. And I was talking about grace. Yes. I mean, this was long before grace was popular. I'm not sure that it is yet in yeah. some corners, but nevertheless. <laughs> and I'm telling you, there was almost a, an audible groan that came from behind me. Thank God for uh, the pastor of that particular church was a good guy. And, I mean, I don't think he necessarily agreed with everything I preached, but he was a good guy. He was good to me. That was Brother Butcher. He was a, he was a good person. And he, you know, he kind of helped me out. And I was still a young guy, but still, I mean, it, I didn't get a handshake. I didn't get a pat on the back. I got nothing but, you know, you could be, what do they call it in the Catholic Church? Excommunicated is the word. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I beat them to the punch, though. I quit before they could fire me. Hallelujah. I showed them. But I'm just saying, there's tradition can so lock us down that we can't get anything from God, that we can't even hear from God because we're convinced that this is what it's got to be. Because that's what we've heard. We've heard it more than we've heard anything else. So that has to be true. And all the time God is yelling, I love you. I want to bless you. I want you to be free. I want you to enjoy life. I want you to know the truth. And I want the truth to set you free. And we're going, no, no, no. I just want more tradition because I'm more comfortable with that. Praise the Lord. See, tradition keeps us from truth. And see, grace isn't unmerited favor alone. Grace is God's willingness to use His power and His ability on our behalf through us. Praise the Lord. That's grace. God's energy, God's power, God's authority. Freely given. Amen. His ability. And then use it through me. Yes. That's incredible. That is so much greater. I mean, really think about this. This is how good God is and how unselfish He is. He could just do it. Yeah. And we'd just be innocent bystanders standing around going, oh man. It would be like uh, forever on, you know, Moses coming down with the tablets. Always looking to see what God's going to do next. No. He wants to do this through me. There it is. There it is. He wants you to participate. He wants you to be a part of the Godhead. He wants you to experience the life of God. He wants to experience our life, but he wants us to experience his life. It's a sharing. God gets in the earth, we get to experience the heavens. That's the way he wants it, praise the Lord. Second Peter chapter one and verse two. It 
See, he doesn't want this to be boring. He doesn't want it to be just church as usual and religion. He, he wants us to experience the supernatural. Because that's our true identity. That's who we really are. That's why we crave these things, and we don't know what it is we're craving. Because it's our spirit that longs to connect with the spirit, with the reality. And that's why when, okay, that's why we have, whoa, Sheila. That's why we have, whoa. That's why we have this, and we have this, and we have the rolling, and we have the jumping, and we have the falling, and we have the weeping, and we have... Why? Because this flesh doesn't know how to handle the spirit full on. It's just, it isn't, there's nothing wrong with any of that, but what it is, is our flesh responding to a spiritual thing that it doesn't know how to respond to, that it's not capable of really responding to. And so we shout, or we run, or we weep, or we laugh, or we holler, or we cry, or we jump, or we, whatever. And then we, we have made that a thing. We've made that the thing that we're looking for. And all that is, is like, it's like the hiccup after eating too fast. <laughs> right? It's like the Holy Spirit is just bubbling up inside of us, and I can't control it. So, you know? Yeah. Only it's a woo! Yeah. Or a jump, or a run, or whatever. Yeah. It's a spiritual hiccup. So... And we make the hiccup the thing. We're all looking for somebody to get the hiccups. Yeah. All the hiccup is, is, is just that it tells us what's going on inside that person. Right. And all that shout is, it's telling us the Holy Spirit is yes. bearing witness. Amen. And we feel it. And sometimes we're not shouting. We just lift our hands because we don't know what else to do. Yeah. Amen. We're just saying, I surrender. Have at it. Praise the Lord. Yes. And, and we get to feeling that feeling. And we're, you know, we're getting goosebumps and feeling giddy and all of that stuff. And that's just the Holy Spirit bubbling up, bubbling out of us, and our flesh just kind of responds. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's just God saying, I got you. Come yes. on. Amen. We're connected. We're hooking up here. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. So, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace, what we just talked about, His empowering, His power working through us, is multiplied to us through the knowledge of God in Jesus Christ. The Word of God. Amen. That's how it, that's how it increases. Praise the Lord. Amen. In other words, it's like it says in Matthew, you don't have to go there, Matthew 16, 19. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Yep. Amen. Whatever you do on earth, I'll back it up. Yes. Heaven will back it up. Whatever you confess, whatever you continue to declare in agreement with my word, you've got my word. All of heaven's going to back it up. I'll send angels to back this thing up. I'll put a, If you've got a demon down there messing with your stuff, I'll send angels down there and they'll run them off. Yes. Praise the Lord. You've got to stay. And the, and the enemy will flee. Yes. Praise the Lord. Whatever you do on earth, I'll back it up. Praise the Lord. See, it doesn't just happen. But you set it in motion. And you set it in motion by acting on the God-given authority of His Word. Every time you speak this, you're speaking as a king and a priest. You're speaking with authority. And everything has to obey the words of the king. As it is written... So shall it be. Amen. That's, that's the way it works. James chapter 4 verse 7. Again. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. See it's not God's responsibility. It's our responsibility to exercise his God given authority here on earth. That's what Jesus was doing. Yeah. I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see. I only react to situations the way I see my father react, according to the word. You see what I'm saying? This is discipleship. This is discipline. Yes. It isn't, you know, how many stars you get for Sunday school. We need to go to Sunday school. We need to come together in church and assemble ourselves together and so on and so forth. Because we need people of like mind, people yes. that think the way we think, yes. that operate the way we operate for encouragement. Amen. Yes. But that's not what he's, he's not talking about, you know, just really be good and, 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 and you'll be blessed and then I'll do something for you. He's saying, I've given you authority. You have responsibility to exercise my authority 
here yes. on earth yes. as it is in heaven yes. so shall it be on earth uh, amen we are the ones who make that a reality yes. praise the Lord that's the reason for the emphasis on grace not like grace is a separate message or something but the reason for that is so that we can feel like we are accepted yeah. That it isn't about my performance, that I don't have to, you know, worry about if I screw up today or screw up tomorrow, that all of a sudden I've lost my authority. No, you're, you're, the callings and elections of God are without repentance. Yeah. Meaning He doesn't change His mind. No. There you go. He called you. Unless, he, unless the Spirit drew you, you wouldn't have been saved. You wouldn't have responded to God in the first place. Right. So He drew you. He called you. Yes. And if He called you, He's not going to let you go. No, he's he has given you authority. And He wants you to operate in that authority. And it's not based on you. It's based on Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Just a couple more scriptures here and we'll wrap it up. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of His might. Amen? Not in ourselves, but in the power of His might. The power of His Spirit that dwells in us. Amen. Praise the Lord. That thing is eternal. That thing is all-powerful. It's God in you. The hope of glory. The hope of that reality being manifest. That's where the glory comes in. Praise the Lord. Okay, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 26 through 28. Now, I've said it before, but it's, it's true. If we really get this, your problems are over. Because even when you've got problems, you're not going to worry about the problems. You know you've got the solution. Submit to God. That will resist the devil, and he'll flee. The obstacles will go. Praise the Lord. But you've got to be consistent. Again, you've got to be consistent. You can't, you can't get all fired up today, you know. It's like the Hawkeyes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Beat Ohio State 55 to 24, something like that. Turn around and lose the next two weeks like they were... Like it was a wheelchair league. Pardon me, I know that's politically incorrect, but... That's how they looked. And then come back and beat Nebraska yeah. like they were a redheaded stepchild, yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Ron. <laughs> anyway, God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. That's us. That's not a fairy tale. That's not a children's book. That's the Word of God. That's God's own words. Praise God. Look at Numbers. Okay, well, this last scripture. Numbers 23. Uh, verse 19 through 21. Numbers 23, 19 through 21. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Has he said it? He will do it. That's his word right there. Has he said, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. That's like the devil speaking there. It's Balak is who it is. He was hired to curse the children of Israel. The devil has come to curse us. Amen. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Amen. We just read that we were blessed. The devil can't reverse it if you'll just agree with it. Amen. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Now, all you've got to read is just that cursory reading of Jacob's life, and you'll know that there was plenty of iniquity there. God just didn't find any. It's us. Yes. We've, we've committed iniquity. But he said, I have chosen yes. your sins and your iniquities. I will remember no more. Yes. 
Praise the Lord. They don't exist. So he has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of the king is among them. Give him a hand clap. Praise God. Hallelujah. So our God identity, our Genesis face that we just read, this one with authority, praise the Lord, is the truth that sets us free. If you can get that locked down in your spirit and in your mind, it will change your life. Right. It will change the results in your life. Right. Hallelujah. It has to. Because God's not a man that he should lie. Right. If he said it, he'll do it. If he wrote it, it has to come to pass. Yes. So it yes. would be to our benefit to stick with this. Yep. And not with this. Right. This will get you in trouble. Because the enemy can come and subtly yes. deceive us. Just like Eve. Yeah. But if we stay with what God said, yes. nothing He does can harm us. Right. Stay with this. He'll feel the resistance mm -hmm. and flee. Mm -hmm. And even more than that, God has a big Jesus grin on His face. Mm -hmm. It pleases Him to see us take advantage of the benefits that He's provided for us. It pleases Him to see us Yes. Operate in faith based yes. on what he said. Yes. Just it gives him great pleasure yes. to bless us with every good and perfect gift. Amen. Amen. Give him one more hand clap tonight. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So whatever we're confronted with, and all of us are confronted with something, take it to the word. Yep. Amen. Tell the devil. Yep. Beat it. Hit the road, Jack, and don't come back no more, no more, right? right? Praise the Lord. Let's just stay with the Word of God. When the enemy comes and tries to plant fear, tries to cause you to be confused, just speak the Word back to him. And you'll find not only does it cause him to flee, but it causes God to rise up in you and make you feel altogether different about the situation. Amen? Amen. Thank you for your patience tonight. God bless all of you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Hope we'll see you back here Sunday. Sarah will believe it for great reports when you get back next week. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yep. Glory. Well, I forgot to tell you, I got this random phone call today from this Minnesota phone number, and I'm like, who is this? <laughs> and it was a chef, an owner, who wanted me to bring him a gallon of kimchi. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Already starting. I'd say, amen. Bring it on, Pettijohn. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she just emailed me today. I have. No, I'm not going to email her back. She has not let me know that. Oh, why would the Jimmy come with me? I think it was the last one. Yeah, I didn't ask.